On some of the recent videos that I've made about using Linux, one of the most common comments that I've seen on those videos, other than you can't play games on Linux, is some variation of, hey, on Linux, you've got to do everything from the command line. And in this video, I'm going to try to convince you that really it's not that bad. So starting off, I don't want people to think that I'm trying to gaslight them here. There are legitimate reasons why a lot of people think that Linux uses the terminal like all the time. First, Linux used to use the terminal like all the time. But every year that goes by, desktop Linux requires the terminal less and less as more features get built into the desktop environments. So let me encourage you that if your last experience with Linux was like five years ago or more, you really probably need to reconsider because things have changed quite a bit since then. Second, a lot of the experience that people have with Linux systems comes from either using it on a server or some kind of like network attached storage software or something like that. And those specific types of applications are often very terminal heavy because they're kind of designed to be operated remotely or headlessly, which means without a monitor. And the developers aren't going to waste a lot of time building a GUI environment when everybody's basically going to be accessing those systems via like SSH or something. Trust me, desktop Linux really isn't like that. It is designed to be used graphically. And the last reason that I want to point out of why a lot of people think that Linux is so terminal heavy is because when they look up stuff online, the solutions that are given to problems that people have with their Linux systems often does come in the form of commands for the terminal. And that's the case even when the solutions might be able to be accomplished via a GUI environment. This can leave novice users with the impression that you must use the terminal all of the time when it probably wasn't actually necessary in the first place. Now, don't get me wrong. There's a valid reason why the online Linux community tends to give answers in the form of command line responses. Since Linux is so very modular, there are a lot of different desktop environments out there. A lot of them have different settings, different file managers, and different programs on them. And so the exact configuration can be pretty specific to an individual setup. And that means the exact process to fix a problem with a GUI interface also may be really specific to a specific user's configuration. Whereas command line stuff tends to be a lot more uniform. So yeah, you might have sudo DNF on one system and sudo apt on another and sudo zipper on another, but everything after that is often really, really similar. And that means terminal solutions are often very flexible and they work on most other Linux systems regardless of what distribution you're using or what desktop environment you're using. You know, further, while a lot of people might rag on the command line for being complicated, the reality is, is that sometimes it just offers more options than a GUI system does. You can tell yourself that Windows doesn't need to use Terminal, but the reality is sometimes that means that on Windows, a specific solution just isn't available at all. Now, moving on from, you know, why it does seem to be the case that there's a lot of GUI commands floating around for Linux, let me give you a couple of quick examples where the solutions that you find online that use terminal commands might not actually be required. And you might have just been able to use a regular GUI interface to solve that problem the whole time. So the first thing that we consider is just installing software. And as you can see right now, I am doing software updates through the desktop environment. Fedora comes with a program called Discover, which is a software manager. And I don't have to use command line at all. Even though if you look up online how to install any piece of software on Fedora, somebody's probably going to give you a sudo DNF install command. But you don't have to do that. You can actually just use Discover and install your software graphically. Even the part here where it says, hey, you need to add on a repo. Well, all this is, is just giving your system a link to a repository somewhere, and that's built into the graphical user interface. So here in Discover on the left, I can go into settings, and here are all the repos. And if I want to add one, I can 
add a source over here. So it's really not that hard. There are just common ways that people give advice, and most of the time on Linux that can be command line, but it doesn't mean that it has to be command line. There are often graphical ways to accomplish these problems. Here's another example. So on Linux, whenever you install DaVinci Resolve, you just have to understand that Blackmagic has used an older version of some of the software in their development, and some of the libraries are out of date, and those have to be changed whenever you do your installation. And, you know, you'll see a lot of people on the internet asking how to fix this problem with these old libraries that create these conflicts. And most of the time, there's going to be solutions that involve, well, command line. So how hard is this to actually do if you don't want to use command line? Well, it's really easy. How would you normally move some files around in Windows? Well, you'd probably use the File Explorer. And the file manager that I've got here is Dolphin, and all we need to do is go to the right directory. So if I go to my hard drive and I go into Opt, so in here you'll see, oh, there's Resolve. Open that up. Okay, I'm looking for the libraries. That's in Libs. And in here you'll find all the little libraries, and you just need to find the right files to move. Now this is going to be locked down with permissions, so what do you do? Well, I'm going to right click, up pops a little menu over here, and I say open as administrator so that I have privileges. It's going to say, oh, make sure you can do that. Get your password in there, and okay, now I can move stuff around as I want. So if I need to open up a new folder, create a new folder. I just right click, say create new folder. All right, there you go. Create a new folder. Now I've got a folder that I've called disabled libraries. And in that, I just grab the libraries that I want to get rid of and move them in there. And there they are. And now whenever Resolve tries to find those libraries, they won't be there, but the default system libraries will. And those are the defaults. So it won't use old libraries. And now the thing will just work. You don't need to use command line. But now again, people online in Linux forums will probably give you command line stuff because that will work on pretty much all Linux systems. This will work on any Linux system that has a file manager built in. It might be a little different on different file managers though. So that's all there is to it. it you don't have to use command line for everything. Okay, so thus far I've tried to establish that you really don't have to use the terminal that often for the vast majority of desktop stuff on Linux. But I, I don't want to lie to you, you might eventually, on occasion, need to use the terminal for something. So as frightening as that is, let me reassure you, it's really not that bad. And I'm very confident that it's not that bad and that you won't actually think it's that bad. Because here's the real point, you probably do stuff very similar to command line or terminal type operations all the time. And you probably don't think anything about it. Most people do stuff that's very similar to what a command line does in their day-to-day -day lives on computers or on your phone all the time. After all, what really is the command line doing? What is the terminal doing? It's just typing some stuff. And usually, the commands that you need to use won't even be that complicated. You just type something in and hit enter, and that's it. And how often during a day do you just type things in and hit enter? There's really nothing to worry about. Don't you text people all the time? Don't you type out emails all the time? You type in items into your calendar. You type in searches into Google. You type in websites in your browser. And the vast majority of the time, you probably won't even actually have to type things into the terminal. You'll just copy and paste the appropriate command from some website, just like you copy and paste website addresses. You don't have to be some wizard. You don't have to learn how to code. It's literally just control C, control V, right? It's the same stuff that you do all the time you know, copying links out of Discord. And seriously, you do other things like this. I mean, does Microsoft Excel scare you? For anybody that does spreadsheets, terminal commands are a piece of cake. There are probably gamers out there who spend hours customizing their keyboard shortcuts or controller layouts for some game that they like to play. And then they'll turn around and on Linux think that editing a config file or typing in the word sudo is some kind of huge deal breaker. But y'all, it's basically the same thing. It's the same skill set. You're doing the same physical actions. Or like graphical artists may think that, you know, they really, they are non-technical. They don't, they don't really work that much with technical stuff. But look, have you never had to look up color codes or hex online and then paste that into Adobe Illustrator? 
Because, I mean, really, that's all that you're probably going to have to do with command line or terminal stuff in Linux anyway. So, look, I, I know that the terminal can be a bit intimidating, but really, if that's all that's holding you back on, like, trying out Linux, then all I'll ask is that you consider what I've said here. I mean, first, you probably won't actually need to do that very often at all. And if you ever get a response from somebody online and they tell you to use a terminal command, politely just ask them, hey, is there any way I can do that without using the terminal on your specific system? Because there very well might be. And even if there's not, you know, don't worry, because it probably just won't be that bad. It'll probably be a short little one line command that you can just copy and paste. And here's the real weird part. Honestly, after you use like a handful of terminal commands, you're going to start to get more comfortable with it. And you're probably going to realize it's really not that bad. And you might even end up being one of those weirdos that likes using the terminal. I mean, you know, heaven forfend that we end up being that person, but it is possible. Anyway, that's all I got to say in this video, right? Don't be afraid of it. It's, it's genuinely not that bad. If you've got any feedback or comments, as always, feel free to leave them down below. Thanks.